Hi, hello YouTube. Um, my name is Tyler, and today I'm going to be doing a uh, speech jammed read of Civil Disobedience by Henry Thoreau. Uh, let me set up my speech jammer real quick like. Alright, have it running. Talking very slowly right now. It's starting to work a little bit. Alright, um, opening up the, the, the text to read. And I will be reading on the duty of civil disobedience. By Henry David Thoreau. <clears throat> I heartily accept the motto that government is best which governs least, and I should like to see it acted up to more rapidly and systematically carried out. It finally amounts to this, which also I believe, that government is best which governs not at all. And when men are prepared for it, that will be the kind of government which the, we will have. A government is at best but an expedient, but most governments are usually, and all governments are sometimes inexpedient. The objections which have been brought, is brought against the standing army, and they are many and weighty, and deserve to prevail may also at last be brought against a standing government. The standing army is only an arm of the standing government, the government itself, which is only the mode which the people have chosen to execute their will, is equally liable to be abused and perverted before the people can act through it. Witness and present the Mexican War. Witness the present Mexican War. The work of com comparatively a few individuals using the standing government as their tool for in the outset the people would not have consented to this, to this measure. This American government, what is it but a tradition though a recent one, endeavoring to transmit itself unimpaired to posterity but each instant losing some of its integrity. It has not the vitality and force of a single living man, for a single man can bend it to his will. It is a sort of wooden gun to the people themselves, but it is not the less necessary for this, for the people must have some complicated Mach machinery or other, and here it's then to satisfy that idea of government which they have. Governments show thus how successfully men can be imposed upon, even impose on themselves for their own advantage. It is excellent, we must all allow. Yet this government never of itself furthered any enterprise, but by the alacrity, al alacrity, alacrity, I don't know that word, I've never seen that word before, with which it got out of its way. It does not keep the country free, it does not settle the West, it does not educate. The character inherent in the American people has done all has done all that has been accomplished, and it would have been st it would have done somewhat more if the government had not sometimes got in in its in, in its way for government is an expedient by which men would fain succeed succeed in letting one another alone and as been said when it is most expedient, the government are most let alone by it. Trade and commerce, if they were not made of India rubber, would never manage to bounce over obstacles which legislators are continually putting in their way. 
And if one were to judge these men wholly by the effects of their action and not partly by their intentions, they would deserve to be classed and punished with those mischievous persons who put obstructions on the rail railroads. <laughs> uh, should I keep going? I'll just keep going. But to speak practically as a, and as a citizen, unlike those who call themselves no government men, I ask for not at one no government, but at once a better government. Let every man make known that what kind of government would command his respect, and that will be one step toward attaining it. After all, the practical reason why, when the pe power is once in the hands of the people, a majority are permitted and for a long period continue to rule is not because they are most likely to be in the right, nor because this seems fairest to the minority, but because they are physically the strongest. But a government in which the majority rule in all ca ca cases cannot be based on injustice, cannot can be based on justice, even as far as men understand it. Can there not be a government in which the majorities do not virtually decide right and wrong, but his conscience to the legislator? Why is every man a conscience then? I think that we should be men first and subjects afterward. It is not desirable to cultivate a respect or con respect a respect for the law so much as for the right. The only obligation which I have a right to assume is to do at any time what I think right. It is truly enough said that a corporation has no conscience, but a corporation on conscientious men is a corporation with a conscience. Law, law never made men a whit more just, and by means of their respect for it, even the corporal, even the well-disposed, are daily made the agents on injustice. A common and natural result of an undue respect for the law is that you may see a file of soldiers, colonel, captain, corporal, private, powder monkeys, and all marching in admiral order over, over the hill or hill and dale to the wars against their wills, aye, against their common sense and conscience. Consciences. Conscience. Consciences which makes it very steep marching indeed and produces a palpitation of the heart. They have no doubt that it is a damnable business in which they are concerned. They are pe all peaceably inclined. Now what are they? Men at all? Or small movable, small movable forts and magazines at the service of some unscrupulous man in power? Visit the navy yard and behold a marine, such a man as an American government can make, or such as it can make a man which... It, black arts, a mere shadow and reminiscence of humanity, a man laid out alive and standing, and already, as one may say, buried under arms with funeral accompaniment. <laughs> Though it may be. Not a drum was heard, not a funeral note. As his course to the rampart we hurried, not a soldier discharged his farewell shot, or the grave were out his we're out here hero was buried all right i'm gonna stop it here um i'm gonna keep the thing going on here but uh yeah <laughs> hope you enjoyed my uh speech jamming i can already tell this my voice is gonna be really cracky because i've heard my voice through this whole thing <laughs> but uh 23 years old and i'm still cracking Gotta mean that I'm young in the voice. I have a I have a very young vo voice. And uh, yeah, later.